Hi there, and welcome back to the BNS channel. My name is Edie Ann. I wanted to do an updated version of how to create a Google Form since Google Drive has changed a bit since the last time I did a video in 2014, I think. So it's super easy. They're a lot easier to create, actually. And the biggest part that you need to do on your own prior to this video is to create yourself a Google Drive account. So you would just type in uh, google.com or drive.google.com and create your Google Drive from there. If you have a Gmail account, you already have a Google Drive account. So when you go to drive.google.com, you're going to come to this page. Now keep in mind, these are all um, my files that I have set up right now, and um, this is where I do most of my work. So on the left-hand side, you're gonna see a big blue button that says new. If you click on that, this is telling it that you want to create a new document, new sheet, new slides, or under more, a Google Form. So we're going to go ahead and click on Google Form. It'll open up a new page. The form that creates automatically or generically by default is this particular form. Um, it's very plain and will do the trick, believe me. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is title your form. And so here we're going to put in order form just for, oops, just for training purposes, okay? Underneath in the form description, you can actually type in, um, you know, here is where you will place your order for your Sensi products, and you can put your website, whatever you want to put there. It's totally fine. You're going to notice also that on Google Drive that your form or anything that you do on Google Drive is automatically being saved as you make changes. So when you make a change, you're gonna notice that this up here actually um, will change for a moment. It'll say saving, make, uh, saving changes to Drive, and then it says all changes have saved in Drive. So it's basically telling you that everything has been saved. When you start to create your questions or your fill-in information, each section is created separately. So we're gonna deal with question one first. So I'll probably put, please enter your name. Now, it actually will default to some things if it recognizes the name that you're putting in or the, the title that you're putting in. So here by typing name, it automatically went to what's called a short answer. Short answer means that it's gonna be a line of text that can be entered by the person filling in the form, okay? Here are your options. When you click on the drop down, you're gonna get short answer, which is a short answer. You're gonna get a paragraph where somebody could actually type up um, a, a much more broader note field, okay? You could do multiple choice. You could do check boxes. The difference between multiple choice and check boxes is multiple choice only requires one answer that they select. Check boxes, they can actually select multiple options. Drop down means that they would be um, picking from a list that you give them. You can do a file upload, you can do linear scale, multiple choice grid, checkbox grid. So there's a lot of different things that you can create on your form. But for the basics of this particular form, we're gonna do short answer for all of the information like name, phone number, um, address, that sort of thing. So now that we've got one section here, right? This is the section. We're going to want to do another one. So let's click on the plus over here where it says add question and we add another one. Now you will notice that it bumped itself on top of name and I'll show you how we can move that. So name, address, and there it picked paragraph because they know that there could be multiple lines in an address, correct? So that's kind of cool. So if you put your crosshair on top where these six dots are, you can actually drag this section below or drag the name above where the address is. So you can move the sections in whichever order you want to have them, okay? The other thing that I want you to notice in each of these sections that you create is that you can actually duplicate it if it's going to be a similar section, just a different title potentially. You can delete the section. You can have it as a required answer. So in other words, they have to answer this question before they move on 
to the form. If they try to submit the form without answering a required question, then it'll bring them back to that question before they can submit it. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and click on this last one and add another field. This time we're going to ask a question. Now keep in mind, I'm just showing you some random things that you might want to utilize when you're creating a form. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be part of a quote unquote order form. Okay. Um, you could potentially be sending a survey out. You could be doing all kinds of things with, with forms. So here we're going to say, would you like to become a Sensi consultant? Oops, I built it wrong. All right. And so it automatically went to multiple choice because it's a question. So in option one, I'm going to type, yes, sign me up. Okay. In the second option, I'm going to say no. But I'm also going to add other. So by clicking on this, it'll automatically add that next option. And other just means that they can fill it in with information that they want me to know about. So maybe they say, no, not right now. I don't have the money. Maybe I'm trying to save the money. No, I don't, you know, whatever it is, they could give you some information towards that answer. Okay. Now remember, multiple choice means that they can only pick one of these questions or these answers, I'm sorry, these responses. Okay. But I'm also going to require that they answer this question before they submit the form. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to add another question. This time, what are your favorite fragrances? I'm having a hard time typing. Okay, this time I want to do check boxes. And the reason I want to do check boxes is because they could potentially choose more than one. Woody, if I hit tab, it goes to add an image, which I could add an image to this particular option just to show it, right? Spa, fruity. bakery. <laughs> okay. And so here, because it's check boxes, when they go to answer this question, maybe they like both Woody and bakery, you know, so they can select that. I'm not going to add other option because I'm going to list all of the categories that we have in our catalog. I'm not doing it right now, but um, you would list all the categories, right? So they'd have to check. Now, do I make this a required question. It doesn't have, they don't have to, to respond to that. Although I think I want them to have to answer the name being required. And to top it off, I want another field that's called email. So I duplicated the, the name field and changed the name of it. And I want it required. So all of the settings that I had set for name got transferred into this new section. Okay. There's something that also Google Forms has the ability to do, and that's email, uh, enabling email collection settings. So basically what it is, is they're going to automatically collect all email data and track the responders um, so that you have an email list. Okay. So this is kind of a neat feature. Um, it is a new feature. And so if you're not quite sure what it does, try it out. See what it, what kind of information it gathers for you. It's free. <laughs> um, okay. And so this is a required now because I duplicated it, it popped it right after name, which is okay, but I think I want to have it underneath the address instead. So I'm going to drag it down so that address pops up on top of it. Okay. Now I can scroll back down and I want to add another field, but I want it to go after where this field is. So if I click on this particular section and say add question, it will automatically put it below it. If I had selected this question and add question, then it adds it right below that, but above the other one. Okay. I don't need this one. So we can go ahead and delete this by hitting the trash can. All right. 
There we go. So here's our question that we never did, we never filled in. And I want to do some a drop down. Okay. So here is what a potential drop down could look like. Um, I am interested in booking a party. Please select which type below. Okay, so option one would be a home party, a basket party, a Facebook party, a bingo party, <laughs> a online catalog party. Ugh. Oops, <laughs> sorry, hitting all kinds of buttons. Did not mean to do that. All right, so, and okay. So here, it's gonna look like a drop down. And so what'll happen is a box will open up and they'll have to select which ones. Now, keep in mind what type these all are, okay? And so when we look at the form, you're gonna see how these are created, all right? Now, I am also going to, not at this time, I'm going to make this one required as well. All right. So let's say our form is completed. And this is very basic. This is super easy for us to do. If I wanted to add a picture or a background, I would click on the color palette. I could choose a different color for my form. But I also can put a picture to create a theme in the background. So let's say I um, want to put a picture of Sensi. I'm going to go to my, I'm going to go to upload. Then you can select from your computer by clicking on from my computer. I've already done this. So I'm going to go ahead and use my logo just so you can see what it looks like. Now this is the section that it wants to do, but believe it or not, it actually can be bigger. So you wanna make sure that you get all of the amount of space that you possibly can. And I'm gonna make sure that my title is within that square. Yep, it's gonna cut off all the rest of it, but that's okay. I'll hit select. And then at this point, it's going to change the color scheme and the header. Okay, so if you wanted to put something Sensi up there, you could as far as in regards to a uh, independent Sensi consultant logo or maybe pictures of warmers or something. Okay, so you could do whatever you wanted. And this is how, um, well, it'll look a little bit different when we see the form, but for the most part, this is what it's going to look like. Okay, now I want you to look up top here. Okay, so here it says questions. And here it says responses. So once your form is live, what's going to happen is Google is going to save all of the answers to the questions that people responded to in your form. And they're going to put those responses here so that you can go through them and look at them. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at what our form is going to look like by clicking on this preview eyeball. And there you go. Okay, so this is what the form is going to look like. Now, let's remember that we had um, different options for different things. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my name. Okay. <laughs> but if I wanted to, I could make it bigger, right? Okay, because remember that I... Um, we created this as a paragraph, so we have the ability to make the field or the note section larger by hitting enter. If I try to do that in the name section, I'm hitting enter and it's not creating anything because it's not set up to be a paragraph. It was set up to be a short answer. Remember? Okay. So then I can go down to my email. Okay. And anything with this little red asterisk is a required field. And so here is that um, 
note to tell us that. Asterisk means required. So if it has a red asterisk, that means they have to fill it out. If they don't fill it out, they'll get bumped back to it by when they try to submit the form. Would you like to become a Sensi consultant? Sure, sign me up. But I can't do more than one answer. Okay, so that was our um, multiple choice. Okay, here is our um, category. You know, what was it called? Do, do, do. Let's go back and look at it. Check boxes. It was called check boxes. So with the check boxes, I can select as many as I want. Okay. Then this was our drop down, right? So it says, I'm interested in booking a party. Please select which type below. So if I click on this down arrow, it's actually going to show the list that I created. So I want to do a bingo part, bingo cart, bingo party. <laughs> um, and then that's it. Then they click on submit. You order form, your responses have been recorded, and that's it. That's how they submit your form. Now, let's go back to where we created the form. I want you to notice here up at the top, it added one, right? So when I click on responses, now the summary is going to show me everybody's responses in this one section. Right now it's only showing me, so it looks like individual, but it is going to be a summary of everybody. All right, so it's going to show all of the answers that we did. Do you like to become a consultant? Blue means yes, right? Um, what are your favorite fragrances? So see, it, what's going to happen is it's going to show a graph of everybody's. So you're going to get a good idea of what people like and what they don't like. You interested in booking a party? And it'll show the graph for the different choices. How cool is that? Okay. Then if you click on individual, it will show each form individually for each person. That way you can have a more individualized um, view as to who responded and what they responded. Okay, you can print this, you can delete them. Okay, go back to the questions. Now, one of the things that I want to show you is also up here on the far top left corner. If you click on where it said untitled, it will add this information to the title. Okay, it'll transfer that information over. If you don't click in that section, it keeps it untitled. Just a little trick or something you need to know okay all right so then in the far left right corner where it has the three radial dots okay they call that kind of a, a hamburger menu you can go and um, set different preferences for your form now I'm not going to go through all of that right now you have the ability to go through that at your own time so that you can see what um, options you have, okay? The thing that's most important is you need to get a link so that people can get to your form. So if you click on send, you're gonna notice that it can you can send it directly to somebody's email from here, but you can also get the link right here, okay? I usually shorten it because it's, off, it's an awfully long link. So I'm going to go ahead and control C will copy this link for me, or I can just click copy down here at the bottom. Okay. Now it says it copied to the clipboard. Um, and so what happens now is if I want to go and send an email to somebody, okay, let's, uh, why is that not moving? Oops. Okay. If I want to send an email to somebody, please fill out my form. Here is the link to my online order form. Okay, I paste it in there. And now they have the ability to, whoops, oh boy. <laughs> They have the ability to click on the link and it'll bring them right to the form, okay? You could do this in a post, you could do it in an email, in a text message, um, whatever. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and delete that. So you also have the ability, if you understand HTML, if you have a blog, you could actually embed this form right into your blog. 
for your website, your personal website, if you have it, if you have an exterior one, okay, or external one. All right, but the one that you're probably going to use the most is this one. You could share it right to, to Google Plus from here. You could share it to Facebook from here, as well as Twitter, as long as those accounts are tied into your Google account. Okay. All right. Well, that's the basics of creating a form. And so now what happens is when you go to my drive, which is where your, um, where your files are being held, you're going to see that you have a new form right here. Okay. Well, it's, oh, there's a lot of stuff on my page, so it's kind of hard to see, but um, it'll be listed under your recent forms. Okay. And so mine is right here. And um, you can tell that I created something here as well that I did not title, right? Um, and I have all kinds of forms that I use for all kinds of different things. So I hope you found that helpful. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead, ask them in the comments below, and I'll try to help if I can. Otherwise, have an amazing day. Thank you.